is with the Heath Health Foods. That's kind of a mouthful. Heath Health <laughs> Foods, health and wellness specialist. And she is going to be joining us today. She has vast certifications. She has education in natural healing agents and therapeutic uh, essential oils and vitamins and supplements and a whole host of things. She's a master herbalist. She's a licensed practical nurse, a doctor of naturopathy. Is that how did I say that correctly? You did All good. All right. So thank y'all. So uh, I'm just going to turn it over to her and she's going to get started and we won't then be delayed. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Yolanda, for joining today. Er, thank you for having me, guys. Well, I'm Yolanda Heath, and I live in Paducah, Kentucky. I own um, a health food store. We've been in business for about 16 years. Uh, this afternoon, I'm at a friend's house sitting on her front porch, so it's a beautiful day here, and the sun is shining, so I'm enjoying that a little bit. Um, but I have been in the health food industry for 16 years now. We started out as a really small health food store and we've expanded to what we now answer our phones as health and wellness specialists because we've added a lot of different opportunities to help people where we do in-person consultations. I also do Zoom consultations and things like that. So we offer a lot of different services. I have put my information in the chat. And if we don't get to your questions, um, I am more than happy as Norma asked me to uh, answer those and we'll get that information back to you. So obviously the topic today, uh, Norma, when she reached out to me, said that a lot of people had questions about vitamins and supplements and what vitamin supplements you could use or not use. So I'm going to preface this first part of this is overall vitamins and supplements can help your body and they can be healthy for you. However, if you take prescription medication, please do not just Take whatever I say today and go out and buy vitamins at your local stores and start taking them because you can have contraindications with medications and prescriptions that you, um, along, so they can counteract each other. So you want to be really, really careful about that. Um, so that's, you know, where we're going to start out with. So I'm going to start answering the questions. Um, okay, so the questions in here. And so um, you might have to help me, Norma. I'm not familiar with a lot of y'all's acronyms. So HSP, is that one of the forms of spasticity? Yes, it is. It is hereditary spastic paraplegia. And then the okay. other uh, disease that we work with is primary lateral sclerosis, which is acronym PLS. Okay. Yeah, so, so everybody on here, either has HSP, PLS, or they have an unknown variant that hasn't sure. yet been diagnosed with a particular number. Well, this is not okay. Do you actually know what your SEO company does for your business every single month? If the answer is yes, then go ahead and skip this at. Somebody's, we somebody's no. website. Journey. One of Somebody has Some got their internet turned on and it's overriding yeah. our discussion. Please mute. Thank you. Go ahead, Yolanda. see okay hold on i don't think it's my internet in the background no it's I not, not yours no, okay no, no, all right. go ahead. okay all right so i do not have to answer the question any actual experience with working with um any of your ailments, but I do have experience working with people from a natural health perspective with a lot of different ailments. And one of the things I, I'm a bookworm and I'm an educate, I love to educate and research. So I would always, you know, if I'm working with any individual, no matter what their health concern is, if I don't have experience in it, I'm going to take all the information and knowledge, do my research, and then make an individualized custom health plan for you. So if that helps to answer your question. So uh, Norma yes. sent me in a bunch of a bunch of questions and um one of the first questions the okay. oh yes yeah. okay all right so um i'm going to kind of start in the order that i thought the questions would be a great way to answer so it says what one or two things should i do to start improving my overall health using vitamins or supplements well, one of the things that most people can do that would be really beneficial is take a multivitamin. Now, you can research and people say, oh, you don't need a multivitamin. But the thing about it is a multivitamin can give you a wide variety of vitamins, minerals, and supplements that we do not get through our nutrition. Um, most of us are probably, you know, older in our, you know, late 40s, 50s, 60s. And, you know, food is different now than it was when we were younger. So the soil is depleted and we don't get a lot of the nutrition in our 
fruits and vegetables that we eat that we did in years past. So taking a multivitamin can definitely be a one good, easy stop to get you your B vitamins, to get you some vitamin D, some vitamin C, those type of things. So it's a good overall a round thing to take that can help you. Now, depending on your health, you know, some people can't take multivitamins and different things, but if you can, and you're just trying to find a good starting point, a multivitamin would be a good place to start. Along with that, um, a fish oil would be really, really good. So if you were just like, hey, Yolanda, I don't know what to do. What can I start out with? What's one or two things I could do? I would take a multivitamin and I would do fish oil. Now, the reason I would do fish oil is because as a society, most of us do not eat enough essential fatty acids. And essential fatty acids are fish oil. What that does is it helps to reduce inflammation in our body. It can also improve like athletic performance. So again, if you're dealing with muscle spasms or muscle weakness, it can help that. Um, it also can help to reduce anxiety, which, you know, when you're dealing with any type of chronic illness or anything, anxiety can be a part of it. And it can also increase the muscle mass in the body. So those two things, just starting out just as a basic starting point, a good multivitamin and a fish oil would be a great way to start helping your body as a, as a one-stop beginning. Now, the next question that came out was, is vitamin D important? And especially for those housebound, vitamin D is very, very important. Um, it's a fat soluble vitamin and it vitamin helps D. our body, vitamin D to help us retain calcium and phosphorus. Um, there's a lot of benefits for vitamin D. Some of those include strengthening your immune system. Um, it can boost your mood. It can help with lowering blood pressure. It can help with uh, your heart. It can help with your overall immune system. Um, and right now in our society, all of us are dealing or, or weren't worried about being immunocompromised. If you have a very good high vitamin D level, your immune system is going to be stronger. Um, I know a... a a neurologist that I was talking to him and he was saying that all of his patients who um, had very high vitamin D levels, even if they did get COVID, which is something that is happening, they stood less of a chance of going into the hospital. So people who were in the hospital had higher vitamin D levels than most people who were in the hospital. So if you are having some of these symptoms, such as fatigue, you're not sleeping well, you're having additional bone or achingness in your bones or muscles, uh, maybe you just feel like you're always getting run down and sick, some, or you're depressed, that can be a sign that maybe your vitamin D level is too low. Um, now, I am in the industry of vitamins and supplements, but you, I'm also a firm believer that you can get a lot of nutrition from foods. So some foods that you can eat that are high in vitamin D, eggs orange juice, milk, mushrooms, uh, cod liver oil. Uh, if you like oysters, raw oysters are good. Um, and so vitamin D overall is very safe. Um, Tina asked a question, can you take more than you need? So I think this is leading into my answer to that. So on average, when we're looking at your vitamin D levels, most blood test, if you go to your standard doctor and get a blood test, they're going to say if you're between 30 and 50, that your numbers are good. Okay, you're good. But that's really not the optimal number. The optimum for vitamin D is you want to be between 50 and 70. Now, when you get 70 to 100, that's where we know that we can treat some type of cancers and heart disease. So the higher your vitamin D, the better. However, you can get toxic vitamin D. Now, all of the research I've done over the years, people take varying amounts. Now, if you take a standard multivitamin, you're only going to get about 400 milligrams of vitamin D or units. It's, it, it's international units, not milligrams, sorry, in your multivitamin. I always recommend to my clients and my customers to take additional vitamin D. Um, some people take an additional 1,000 units. Some people take 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Studies show you could take up to it says 50,000 a day. I think that's kind of excessive. I have most of my clients, depending on their health, if they're taking a multivitamin and what else they're taking, take anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 units a day. When I'm feeling under the weather, I will take as upwards of 20,000 units of vitamin D a day. So vitamin D is very important. Now we do know it's called the sunshine vitamin and we can get it, but there's a whole lot of factors in how vitamin D is synthesized and metabolized in your body. The reality of it is, even just out in the sun, we're not going to get enough vitamin D 
we can get some, but it's just not going to be enough to help fight certain illnesses. So check your vitamin D level. If you're below 50, you can probably take a little bit more. Um, and if definitely if you're below 30, we want to get your vitamin D level higher. But you can do that as well through foods or supplementation. Um, so the next question was, did I answer your question, Tina? Okay. Um, how important is vitamin C? Well, the thing about vitamin C is vitamin C helps with our blood vessels, the cartilage, the muscle, and the collagen in our bones. So vitamin C is also a good antioxidant. And so it helps to pull toxins from our body. And it also is needed for the growth and repair of tissues in our body. So in other words, it's going to help us with our skin, our ligaments, our muscles, and things like that. Um, so by taking an appropriate amount of vitamin C, it can help with not only um, high blood pressure, but it can help with your immunity. It can help with heart disease. It helps your memory and thinking. Um, now, how would you know you were deficient in vitamin C um, if you bruise easy? if your wounds don't heal very quickly, but also painful swollen joints. So, you know, if you're having a lot of pain or muscular pain or things like that, you could also be deficient in vitamin C. Um, now, vitamin C, we are so used to hearing the word orange juice, but we can also get vitamin C from citruses, bell peppers, strawberries, tomatoes, um, vegetables such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, now, vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, so it's going to flush out of our body. So that's why you keep replenishing vitamin C, because it's not going to stay in your body like a fat-soluble vitamin like vitamin D. Um, so the next question was, what vitamins or supplements help with spasticity? Now, again, there's a whole different ones that we can look at. Um, so this is actually a vitamin or a supplement. It's called alpha-lipolic acid. Alpha-lipolic acid, you will also see it sometimes as ALA. It is a strong antioxidant and it helps to reduce inflammation and it can help promote healthy nerve function. And it can also slow pro the progression of any like memory loss disorders. Um, we also see alpha-lipolic acid, we'll use it a lot with people who are diabetics. Um, another uh, supplement is called MSM and it is actually, it helps with muscle spasm and it's a natural anti-inflammatory. Um, calcium and magnesium are both natural muscle relaxers, vitamin C again. Um, and so again, a good multivitamin is going to have calcium, magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin D, and it's also going to have your B vitamins because one of the best vitamins for muscle spasms is B12. Now, again, B vitamins are water soluble. So a lot of people will come in and they'll say, oh, I, I'm deficient in B12. Most people are deficient in B12. And so I'll tell them, not only do you take B12, take a B complex, because if you're deficient in one B vitamin, you're probably deficient in other B vitamins as well. Um, and then there's some natural muscle relaxers that you can take that um, things such as chamomile, you can take chamomile in an herb or a tea. Cherry juice is wonderful. So your antioxidant berries, cherries, blueberries, strawberries, they help with inflammation in the body. Um, Again, magnesium is excellent. We're going to talk more about magnesium in just a minute. Um, and also to rest your muscles and blueberries are also good. And the cherries, when I talk about cherries, you want the cherries that you get in the produce section not in your supermarket, not the little manichino sweet cherries, but the bean cherries, the bigger cherries, black cherries that you get in the produce section. Um, so the next question was, I have heard so much about magnesium. Would magnesium help my spasms and how much should I take daily? Now, the interesting thing about magnesium is there's 11 different types of magnesium. So it's not just one type of magnesium. Now, overall, we know that magnesium is responsible for basically over 300 different enzymes that regulate things in our body, such as it synthesizes protein. It helps with our nerve function, our muscle function. It can help with blood sugar, blood pressure, energy metabolism, our heart rhythm. It can help with bone development. It can help with glutathione synthesis, which glutathione is an antioxidant that helps to pull toxins from the body. So magnesium is wonderful. And there's a lot of different types of magnesium that can be taken. Now I'm gonna talk only about a few different types of magnesium versus all of them. I like to recommend a lot to people um, a combination magnesium product. I have a couple that have like three different forms of magnesium in one pill versus like, oh, take this one, take this one, take that one. Um, so one of the most common magnesiums that we hear a lot about is magnesium citrate. 
Magnesium citrate is actually the one that we use a lot for treating constipation. So if you've ever had to have a colonoscopy and they give you the magnesium citrate to help you go to the bathroom, that's the one that's common for that. But again, if you have some health challenges and your digestive system is sluggish, you may want to consider adding some magnesium citrate because it can help to have your bowels go as well. Um, then there's magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is actually what we think, think of milk of magnesia. Um, and it's going to help with your heartburn, your stomach acid, and things like that. Now, magnesium malate. Mal magnesium malate is the one that is used to help treat conditions of overexcited neuromuscular system. So this is gonna help your people who have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, you have a lot of sore muscles and pain. Um, so that's magnesium malate. Um, then there's magnesium L-thorinate. Magnesium L-thorinate is really one that we see about the brain. So people who have any kind of cognition issues, depression, Alzheimer's, um, we'll recommend, or, or learning issues, even in children, if they have learning issues, we'll use magnesium L-thorinate. Now, magnesium sulfate, this is your popular Epsom salt. So if you've ever bought Epsom salts to put in your bath or soak in a tub, that's magnesium sulfate. Now, I would highly encourage you, if you have sore muscle, like, you know, with what the, the ailments that you guys deal with in your life or yourself personally or your family, if they ever need to soak in a tub, use Epsom salts. That's a great way to help the muscles and help the body is by using the Epsom salts. And you can also, if you like essential oils, there's certain essential oils you could add to the bath water as well that can help with muscular pain, such as lavender would be a good one. Um, and you can kind of soak the body and it will relax the muscles as well. Um, so that's how we normally see magnesium sulfate is an Epsom salt. And then the other one is magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate is good for sleep, but it's also used to treat inflammation um, in the body. So that's another one we will find as well. And it's also good, magnesium glycinate is also good for muscle spasms. Um, now, the issue with magnesium glycinate, as I'm sitting here telling you, it's the one that's great for magnesium, um, for muscle spasms, is to know that if you have decreased kidney function, you do not want to take magnesium glycinate because it will counteract what's going on, okay? Um, now, again, I'm all about my food sources. So food sources for magnesium, you can, spinach is a great food source, uh, squash, pumpkin seeds, lima beans, tuna brown rice, almonds, dark chocolate, avocados, yogurt, bananas. So, you know, normally when we're looking at things and we're looking at deficiencies in the body, you know, if you're, if you're having tight muscles, you are probably deficient in magnesium. Honestly, most of us are deficient in magnesium. If you get leg cramps at night, people with leg cramps, muscle cramps, restless legs, I always recommend people start with a magnesium supplement. Um, you know, if you're in my area, if you're not, you can, you know, still find one, but there's one that I really like. It's, um, a company, um, Nature's Life. It's a magnesium 500 milligrams, and it has the oxide, the malate, and the citrate together. And you can get like 100 capsules for less than $15. Um, and a minimum dosage for effectancy on magnesium, you want to take at least 300 milligrams. I kind of go to 500 milligrams, but um, with your... Uh, Magnesium, if you get too much, it can give you diarrhea, okay? So if you're taking magnesium, maybe you're taking 500 milligrams and you start exhibiting diarrhea, you may wanna go to every other day because it could be that it's just making your bowels too loose. Um, what about magnesium glycophol, glycerol? I'm not exactly familiar with that one. I think that was one I was researching earlier today. Um, and one of the things was it didn't have a lot of study on it, but I will get my notes and I will write it down and I will do some research and get that information to Norma to make sure that we, uh, we do that and learn more. Um, because I'm really not really familiar with that one. And there are so many types out there now that it's, you know, sometimes not familiar with all of them. Um, so magnesium, again, going back to the first question, what would be some supplements that you could take that may help you the most? Again, if you take a multivitamin, it's going to have some magnesium in it. And honestly, they usually have magnesium citrate or oxide in your multivitamins. So you'd get a little bit, but you're not going to get that full dose to totally treat um, the spasms. 
All right, so the next question, let's see. Okay, oh, you've had a lot of benefit with it. Okay, cool. Um, how important is it to add collagen as a supplement to your routine? Well, I've been in the natural health industry for over 16 years and every, well, I've studied natural health for over 25 years, but I've owned my business for over 16. And every year there's always a new something and collagen is kind of the new thing that's out there. Um, now we do know collagen accounts for about 30% of our body's protein and it provides the structure and support to strengthen our skin, our muscles, our bones and connective tissue. So if all those are weak in your body, you probably want to consider a um, supplement um, of collagen, especially if you don't eat a lot of um, beef or things like that. Um, so collagen rich foods will include things like bone broth, eggs, meats, fish, spirulina. So you'll see some things now with collagen. They're talking about marine collagen. And so that's going to be the ones from spirulina or algae, um, depending on your body. There's bone broth collagen, uh, collagen made from bones. Like there's a chicken formulation, there's a, a fish formulation, there's a beef formulation. And then there's some companies that have chicken, beef, all fish, all in one. Um, but Collagen can help because we know that uh, these supplements can help you to increase your uh, muscle mass, can prevent bone loss, can relieve joint pain, and can improve your skin. So I have lots of customers um, who are taking um, collagen and they feel like it works very, very well for them. Um, so you know, I, I would say it's not going to hurt you to try it. Worst case scenario, you get positive benefits, you know, so if, if it works for you and you're seeing benefits from it, keep taking it. If you're not seeing any benefits, well, you tried and it didn't work. Now, by saying that, I want to let you guys also know in our society, we are a quick, we want it now, super fast, in a hurry, get it done society. Vitamins and supplements and natural health do not work that way. OK, you need to give something at least I always tell people I try to say 90 days and people look at me kind of funny, but you need to give something a good six to eight weeks to really see if you're going to see benefits because it takes a little bit longer. And if you're trying to get this nutrition from a food based system versus supplements, it's still going to take a little bit longer because all that's going to be contingent on how well does your body break down things? How well does your digestive process work? Is your body breaking down the foods and things that you're eating and can you eliminate them properly? OK. So that's one of the things to look at there. Um, Mike mentions, he says, I've just started taking lion's mane mushroom. There was a claim I read where they may be beneficial to improve brain activity. How do you feel about mushrooms for health benefits? And I've tried mushrooms blends before with no noticeable benefit. Um, mushrooms, talking about those things that are kind of coming around in natural health, the mushrooms have really come out big in the last year. Um, I have several customers who take lion's mane and they believe that they do have a little bit clarity and feel a little bit better. I would say, Mike, it depends on how long have you been taking it, where your uh, brain activity is when you started, because you may be getting small noticeable improvements, but you may not have just got to the, the full throttle or full threshold of the benefit yet. Um, I think mushrooms are great and I think, um, I think sometimes as much as I'm in the supplement industry, sometimes you can take too many things. So I'm very much a less is more person. Let's start with one thing, take that, see if we get improvement. Okay, we need, we have additional, you know, concerns. Let's take something else and add to it. So that's the way I would kind of process looking at that, especially if you're also taking prescription medications, because we want to minimize um, contraindications there. So I hope that answered your question, Mike. Um, can curamin or turmeric make a difference? So I always like to clarify this. Turmeric is the actual herb we're talking about. Curcumin, there's a company out there that calls themselves uh, their product for turmeric, curcumin, but turmeric, the chemical constituent in turmeric is curcuminoids. So that's where it kind of gets interchangeable. So when you're talking about curamin or turmeric, curamin is the chemical constituent in turmeric. Make sense? Okay, so when we're saying turmeric, that's kind of what we're talking about. So there's lots of health benefits about uh, for turmeric. I mean, turmeric is a big buzzword now, um, but it's good for cancer prevention, antioxidants. It can help improve uh, brain function. It can lower your heart risk. It can help treat arthritis. It can help treat anti-inflammatory effects. It can help with reduced joint pain. It can help with your mobility. 
at a minimum though, you need at least 500 milligrams a day. Um, now, some people take more, some people take less, but you need a minimum of 500 milligrams. Um, there's a couple of studies out on PubMed that are showing that anywhere uh, that 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams will help with uh, joint pain and improve mobility and things like that. Now, the thing I want you to know about turmeric is not everybody should take it. And that, that again, it you know, we hear about all these wonderful supplements and everybody goes and starts taking them. But if you have gallbladder issues, if you have a bleeding disorder, if you have diabetes, if you have GERD, uh, infertility for any women, iron deficiencies, liver disease, hormone sensitivities, or heart arrhythmias, you don't want to take turmeric, okay? The other thing about turmeric is it is a natural blood thinner. So if you are currently on blood thinners, you don't want to take it because it will thin your blood even more. Same thing with fish oil. Fish oil can, can be, keyword, can be a natural blood thinner. Now, a lot of our cardiologists will recommend fish oil, but so again, you want to be careful, just what, make sure, you know, if you're, if you're going the natural route, I did put at the top my information for everyone, I'm happy to work with you, but you want to make sure you have someone that knows about herbs and supplements help you because um, the other thing Norma mentioned at the beginning, I'm also a nurse. So I can really do a good job of taking my medical background and my natural health background and putting the two together to look at medicine contraindications and things like that. So, you know, just be very careful when you're doing that. Just don't willy nilly based on anything I say or someone else says, just go start grabbing supplements off the shelf. Okay. Um, so yeah, okay, I told y'all that was a blood thinner. All right, so the other questions that came in was how important are prebiotics and probiotics and what is the difference? Well, I will tell you as a society, we all have a messed up gut. Most all of us, our guts are messed up due to the foods we eat, to the lifestyles we live, to the stress we have in our life. That is pretty much, you know, we all kind of deal with those things, okay? Um, so Probiotics and prebiotics are two different things. Um, probiotics are the live bacteria that's found in things like oats, bananas. It's like it's fiber, okay? Um, or your, I'm sorry, your prebiotics are your fiber. So it's like prebiotic fibers. So basically it's fiber that you eat and usually it starts working up in your upper part of your digestional tract. And then probiotics are the live bacteria that are in our colon. And so most all of us, if you've ever been on an antibiotic, your gut's messed up, no matter when it happened in your life. Um, if you have a lot of digestional issues, maybe you don't eat as well, your food doesn't get broken down, you have constipation issues, then you probably have gut issues. So a probiotic can be really good at helping your body process the bacteria and balance out what they call the gut flora. So that maybe some people will have, if you have diarrhea, if you take a probiotic, it may make you more regular. If you have constipation, it may make you more regular as well. So probiotics can kind of help with the ebb and flow. Now, a lot of your prebiotics, you know, now a whole bunch of companies have them out there and it's basically, it's a fiber. And so people say you put them in smoothies, um, but now companies are getting what they call a three in one. And so it has the prebiotic, which is the fiber, has the probiotic, which is the culture and then a postbiotic. So it's like, that's the kind of the newest up and coming thing, the three in one type deal. Now you can get your... Um, Prebiotics, like I said, in some foods, oats, bananas, uh, asparagus, dandelion, things like that. And then your probiotics, we usually will see in fermented foods such as sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, kefir. A lot of times you'll hear about it in your dairy products is where you're gonna get your probiotics. But I always tell people, honestly, it's very hard to get as many probiotics out of a food as you can in a pill. So when you're looking at probiotics, um, a post, uh, I'm going to answer her question first, is what is a postbiotic? What they're basically saying, a prebiotic is going to work in the upper part of the gastrointestinal system, so say the stomach, and then as it's coming down into the small intestines, and then the probiotic is working in the upper, uh, the first part of the large intestine, and the postbiotic is working at the bottom end of the um of the rectum of the colon of the system. So it's a three in one is what they're calling it nowadays. It's kind of a new thing that's just come out. A couple of companies have come out with them in like the last six months. Um, 
so your fermented foods is where you can get your probiotics. Now, most probiotics, when you look at them, so one of the most common ones you're going to find is acidophilus. Acidophilus is a probiotic that you can pretty much buy anywhere. And that is usually the one that most of us are out of balance with. However, the more, if you're going to take a probiotic, you're looking, so you look at how many billion bacteria and how many strains. So the strains are the different number of bacteria. So if you have acidophilus, bifobacterderm, bifobacterderm longaudia, yada, yada, you know, so there, all of those names are different strains. And then you can have 5 billion, 10 billion, 50 billion. So sometimes you need a really strong probiotic. Like if you've been on antibiotics for a while, or you've been really, really, really sick. Sometimes you can take a lower end or not as many strains, but I'm always one for if, depending on the circumstance, I like to go middle of the road. I usually sell anywhere from eight to 15 strains, anywhere from 20 to 50 billion bacteria or total bacteria. Um, but again, I, I also have some products that are 400 billion, 33 strands. So it just depends on the person's health and what's going on. But again, if you go to your, you know, Walgreens, CVS, and, you know, different places now still have probiotics, just, you know, get one that has more than one strain, because chances are you have more than one bacteria out of balance, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and the last question, and I'm pretty good, I'm proud of myself, Norma, I've answered <laughs> the questions, um, is gut health. Why, what should I do to improve it? Well, the big thing about our gut is gut health is so important. And honestly, we forsake it for everything else. Um, I guarantee you, if we did a show of hands, everybody on here, if I said, how stressed out are you, we would all raise our hand. Life is stressful. Well, what happens when we're stressed is our digestion system starts slowing down. So everything starts slowing down. So you may notice in times in your life, maybe when you are stressed, things aren't flowing as well. You're, you're maybe you're more bloated. Maybe you're having a little more gas, a little more belching, but your body can't process things as well. And that is usually due to stress. So if you can, and sometimes we can't lower our stress levels. That's one of my famous questions. I'll ask people, what's your stress number? And then I say, what can you do about it? Is there anything you can do about it? For some of us, we can't. There's nothing, we can't eliminate one thing that is causing us stress. So we have to learn how to deal with it. Some of that is taking different um, supplements that can help, but they're called adaptogenics that can help with stress levels in the body. So those are things that we can do. But other things that you can do is, you know, try to sleep. Eat slowly, helps to improve your digestion. Be sure you're drinking plenty of water. Now that's a big misnomer. Water is so important. We are... 70% water, so we need a lot of water. The rule of thumb on water is take how much you weigh, divide it in half, and that is the number of ounces of water you should drink a day. Coffee, tea, uh, coffee, tea, colas, all that doesn't count as water, even though some of it's made with water. It's pure water. So if you're having especially sluggish digestion or things aren't moving real well, increase your water. That's really a good thing that you can do. Definitely taking the, the prebiotics and probiotics can help. Um, also digestive enzymes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with digestive enzymes, but you take a digestive enzyme when you are eating a meal and it breaks down the foods that you're eating. So it helps your body to break down the foods that you're eating. So if you're having slow digestion or things aren't working, I encourage you to take a digestive enzyme as well as a probiotic. They're two different things. A lot of times they get confused, but they're different things. Enzymes work in the stomach and help to work to break down your foods and things. Probiotics work in the small intestines and the colon. Um, also, you know, change your diet some, you know, if you're eating a lot of heavy processed foods and you're going through a lot of stress, you know, try to change that up a little bit, but also check for food intolerances. That's a really big thing right now. Um, you know, it kind of becomes a fad. Well, oh, you have to be gluten-free or you have to be dairy-free. Well, as I started at the beginning of the conversation, our food system has changed so much. Our foods have so many chemicals on them. Our foods have been uh, modified and changed up and they never studied our bodies to see what they would do. They studied the food to see how we could improve pest resistance and things like that, but they didn't study our bodies to see how these foods were affecting us. So now a lot of us are having food intolerances that we may have never had before. So if you're realizing you're eating dairy and all of a sudden, man, you're having a stomach rash, or maybe you're having a runny nose all the time, or you've got really bad 
constipation. I mean, it could be dairy. Or maybe if your joint mobility or joint pain um, is really, really bad, it could possibly be gluten in wheat. Um, just I'm going to share this because I feel like somebody needs to hear this. Several years ago, I was very sick. I was having extreme joint pain. My joints and muscles hurt so bad it hurt to walk. And I kept going, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Long story short, I found out I had a food intolerance. That doesn't mean I'm allergic to, but my body can't process to gluten. I got off of gluten completely and all of my muscle pain went away. So, you know, if all of a sudden someone, you know, if you've, you're dealing with an issue, you're dealing with a medical condition, but if something changes and things are getting worse, as they say, you know, we might want to look at food allergies. We might want to consider, hey, doing an elimination diet and seeing if we can cut back on how much gluten we're eating or how much dairy we're eating and things like that. And again, that doesn't mean you don't, can't have it forever, but it may mean that you need to cycle off of it for a period of time, give your body some time to rest and then add it back in. So, um, so that's kind of, I mean, I answered the questions and I know I talk fast, happen to be from Southern Louisiana. So when I feel like I'm on a time crunch, I kind of go pretty fast. Um, but, uh, those were some of the questions. And now Corey has says, what is your opinion of CoQ10? I love CoQ10. Um, most of us in our society are on, um, something for cholesterol. CoQ10 is really, really good. It's going to support your cardiovascular system, especially if you're taking any medication um, for um, cholesterol. It somehow inhibits the way your body makes, because our body naturally can produce CoQ10, but it doesn't necessarily produce enough CoQ10. So a supplement of CoQ10 can definitely help that if you are um, taking cholesterol medicines, but it also helps with your cardiovascular system, which is going to be your circulation system, which is also going to help get the information to your blood vessels and things like that to improve those things. So I'm a big CoQ10 fan. Um, Sue is asking, how about glucosamine chondroitin? Now, the thing about glucosamine and chondroitin you need to be careful is because it's normally derived from shellfish. So if you have any kind of shellfish allergy, you don't want to take glucosamine and chondroitin. Now, normally what you'll see, you'll see glucosamine and chondroitin by itself. And sometimes you will see it with a product I talked about earlier called MSM, which is a form of sulfur. So glucosamine and chondroitin with the MSN together works very well for people. And again, a lot of this is subjective. Some people can take glucosamine chondroitin and the MSM and it works wonderful for them. Somebody else can take it and say, it didn't do anything for me because again, we're all different. Our bodies are different. So again, on that Sue, if you're not taking it and you start taking it, you want to give it a good 90 days because it really does take that long for us to see a change. Um, I'm not opposed to it at all. I think that it can work very well for people. Um, I think there's a lot of things out there, but you have to look at yourself, what's going on in your body. And then I like more bang for my buck. So if I can use a, one product that can help me with joint pain and mobility as well, can help me with maybe stress or, or other things, that's kind of how I do it. I try to take less, but get more bang for my buck. But I think glucosamine chondroitin is a, is a great supplement and you know it's worth trying if you've never tried it before. All right, any other questions? So let me point out to everyone um, that at the very top of the chat box, uh, you'll just take your cursor and scroll that up. Then you will see Yolanda's contact information uh, as well as her email address and as well as her website. Uh, so we would like to invite you if you have questions, then you can contact her. She can even mm -hmm. set up a Zoom uh, where she can you know, provide consultation. Is that right, Yolanda? Mm -hmm. How would that work for for folks if yes. they were interested while they're thinking about their question. Sure. So um, I normally do our consultations for people. Um, I do them in person in my store in Paducah, Kentucky, if you're there. If not, I do do them through Zoom. Um, and if you reach out to me and message me that you saw me on this Zoom, I'm going to give you guys um, $20 off the appointment. It's normally $100. So I'm going to take it down uh, $20 to $80 for you guys. Um, so if you will uh, just contact me, we'll work out all the details for that. Does that sound good, Norma? Yes, that is wonderful. Thank you so oh. very much, Yolanda. I really appreciate that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you. I think there is a question down here that Ann had mm -hmm. about what yeah. is the product that you take that gives you more bang for the buck? You you mentioned <laughs> that just a moment. Sure. Um, I would say based on every 
symptom and what I've learned from you, Norma, over the years about what's going on with, you know, all of the family members or yourself who are dealing with this, I would probably say, you know, turmeric. And, and the reason I say turmeric is because, or cur curumin, uh, uh, curcuminoids, um, is because of the benefits that you're going to have, because it's going to decrease inflammation. It can help with memory. It has other benefits, such as helping with cancers in the body. You know, there's just, I mean, it's a world of information out there about turmeric. So if I was going to, you know, if you're going to try one supplement, but be sure if you do try turmeric, you're not taking blood thinners. Um, so I would say probably turmeric would give you good bang for your buck. Again, a multivitamin is going to help you to get like that calcium, that magnesium, some vitamin D, some vitamin C in there. And um, so it would really, and also be, you know, um, tailored to, from my perspective, tailored to what you have going on in your health. So if you said, hey, Yolanda, I've got this, 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 and this, and you lift me off five symptoms, I'm going to say, okay, out of these five symptoms, if we take this one pill, it's going to hit four of the five. So that's, you know, what I look at when I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis is how can we maximize your dollars and also help you to feel the best with taking the less pill? Because who wants to take a bunch of pills? Nobody really does. So anyway, so Anne, that's I hope absolutely. that kind of answered your question. That's absolutely right, Yolanda. I mean, we've got mm -hmm. to get to the point where we take fewer medications, yes. try to mm -hmm. eat more healthy, mm -hmm. and try to bring ourselves into a more healthy balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right, some of our foods and, you know, products that we're buying, you know, they're not healthy choices. And mm -hmm. yet, you, you know, you try to go and get those things I I appreciated and even kind of laughed under my breath about the cherries, you know, mm -hmm. we love fresh cherries, right? Mm -hmm. And those little and stars, yeah. those are so heavy with sugar. Uh, yep. If there's anybody that has a question and you would like to come onto the screen and you would like to, you know, show your camera and show your video uh, and unmute, I would welcome you for this few minutes that we've got le uh, left on our program tonight. Uh, if there's anybody else that's got questions and you would like to do that, uh, there's some that are being added into the chat box. Uh, sure. we, would, we would welcome that if you would like to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll answer some of these couple questions. One thing that I want to share with you guys that I didn't share at the beginning, but just to share a little bit about how I work with people. You know, one thing that's really important to me is that, you know, I, every one of my clients, I want you to know, you're not just your physical body. We may have physical ailments and we may have physical things going on, but we are definitely more than this physical body. We have mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and social issues that affect us and encompass us as a whole person. And so when I work with clients, I really look at all five of those areas because those five areas are going to affect you as a person. They're going to affect your health. They're going to affect you spiritually. They're going to affect you emotionally. So that's one of, I, I guess, the things that the, the, you know, part of my ministry, part of who I am, how, how I work and how I work through prayer and with God and, and helping people is, you know, looking at all those areas because, you know, we can work all we need to on your physical body, but if there's emotional pain or there's mental stress going on, sometimes the physical body can't catch up. So we have to deal with the emotional and the mental as well. So we have to look at you as a whole person, not just this dichotomy of, oh, you have a muscle aches and pains, or you have physical challenges. We have to look at everything that's going on. Um, so the question about, are you also testing homocysteine and MTHFR? We do work with different labs and we can get testing for you. I always, again, talk to my clients and say, hey, what do you have going on? You know, if you have a medical doctor that you work with and you have insurance that will pay for your blood work and stuff, then, hey, let's get your medical doctor to order it. And then we can look at the results and go through that. Um, you know, so I'm all, all about how can I help you to maximize everything with your health? Because we're a team. I'm an advocate for you. I'm on a wellness journey with you. I'm helping you to navigate all this in between back and forth. And so, um, but yes, we do look at getting some blood testings and things like that. Uh, Tina's asking, how do I feel about iron? Um, again, I... Supplemental iron, I think, can be great. I like to use iron that comes from food-based systems or so that I know is easily absorbable. Um, a great tip on that um, is blackstrap molasses. Blackstrap molasses contains 20% of your daily recommended value of iron. So that's a good tip, and it's also a nice little treat. So um, so how to set up an appointment? Coffee. 
That's right. You can. Um, so I'm in Paducah, Kentucky. There is um, Norma has put my phone number in there. And I think if she'll send out a follow up or whatever, we are going to because I know I talked fast trying to I wanted to try to get as much in, information. in. I am going to put the answers to the questions in a format that Norma can add to, uh, I think, her website, y'all's website. Um, but yeah, if you just email me directly, Yolanda at Heath healthfoods.com. Heath is my last name and we owned a health food store. So, you know, a play on that. Um, but if you will email me that and let me know you were on this call, I will be more than happy to schedule a time and we will meet through Zoom or something like that to be able to help you. And like I said, I'll extend $20 off my normal consultation fee to you guys. So, um, but yeah, just reach out to me. And if you, Norma knows how to get in touch with me if, if you missed it here. And I don't know if she sends out the chat, but I'll be happy to help any of you guys any way that I can. Yes, as a reminder, and, and Yolanda said this, you know, we have videotaped uh, our program today and you guys know you can go back to our website and you can find it through the link to our YouTube channel. If you don't just go immediately to the YouTube channel and please, if you do, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So the moment that Hank's able to upload all that information for us, then we will have that available. It will notify you. And if not, then you can go back to where you registered for the SPF talk, and then you can find the link there that will take you to that. Uh, thank you guys so very much for your little reactions. I appreciate that. That is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. If you do have a question, remember, go back down to your reaction button, raise your hand, and I'll be glad to get you guys in order and we can call on you or you can go ahead and put it over into the chat box. We normally try to end these, you know, and have these programs for just an hour. Uh, I want to remind you guys that we are going to have another one on October the 23rd. So I'm just kind of giving you guys a chance to uh, ask a question before I go into any, any of the other information. I know Yolanda has taken a wonderful afternoon to go over all of those questions. Uh, and again, it will be provided to us in a transcript and also on the YouTube channel. So you guys, um, any other questions? Does anybody else have any other comments before we say thank you to Yolanda and give mm -hmm. her a chance to go on about her evening? Mm -hmm. Well, thank else? you all so much. And if you, uh, thank you for the private messages. Uh, if anything comes up, I see Sue's hand is raised. Um, but if, if you come up with any it's questions clapping. after this, please, please feel free to, to send them to me. I'll be more than happy to uh, help you guys any way that I can. I mean, this is my passion and my mission and ministry to help others. And I don't know what your needs are if you don't reach out to me. So don't hesitate. I'll be more than happy to help any way that I can. Mm -hmm.